Not for the moment. That's IT. Okay, that's IT. Uh, it grabbed my attention because here you are. You've finally gotten to Channel News Asia. Uh, most Filipinos would love to be in the regional uh, setting. And, and the, th the philosophy is I want to establish myself as a news presenter, a serious. Right. And then you're doing something like tech, you know, technology lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> that's like, a, duh, what's going on here? <laughs> five, five years I did that, you know, serious okay. news thing. I guess probably my bosses decided, hey, it's about time I do something fun. Because I did a morning show mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, which was light, easy. It's news, you have interviews, you have a lot of fun stuff. Mm, like USA Today regional version. Or sort of. Like it's like, you know, you're magandang umaga by a okay. regional version. Yeah. Um, and the best part of that morning show for me was actually after the show and I go out and do interviews mm -hmm. and do cooking uh, demonstrations. I actually cook and uh -huh, yeah. do things. Yeah, I think I, I caught a few of that, but I thought it was more of, you know, you were a guest or something. Uh, I wasn't, you know, paying attention 100%. It was it? my philosophy of if I want to bring a story to the viewers, I want to be part of experiencing what the story I was doing okay. was about and it mm -hmm. makes it easier for you to tell the story mm -hmm. so a producer came up and said why don't we have an IT show with you a techno himbo mm -hmm. and techno himbo you know I, I I'm not a very technologically advanced person at that time <laughs> okay so the show evolved season one first few episodes was just me fiddling around with things mm -hmm. and trying to find my way through the techno maze. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of worked. Uh, people loved it. And I guess I, they identified with me, you know, some mm -hmm. sectors of the public who are not so technologically savvy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's bringing all this techno talk back down to the level. But is that a good idea, uh, a Singapore, uh, where the presumption is everybody is techno savvy, uh, B, you're a news presenter, and there you are, showing chinks in your armor uh, in a society that's highly competitive, mm. highly technical and advanced. For one thing, it makes you more likable. They kind of look at you and say, hey, you know, Tim is not all that knowing person. He, uh -huh. There are things he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know about 3G. He doesn't mm -hmm. know about this or that. Yeah. Um, I think that's what journalism is all about. If we don't know, we don't know. That's why we go out looking for the stuff that we want mm -hmm. everyone else to see mm -hmm. or know. Um, but how, are you the, are you a normal in that character as far as Singaporean broadcasting is concerned? Because uh, you know, when I see when I see broadcasters in Singapore, it's like they are all you know authoritative. I yeah. know what I'm talking about. When it comes to news, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. I do have to know what I'm talking about before mm -hmm. I go on air. Mm -hmm. uh, with the IT show, I literally, just because I really want to, mm -hmm. you know, experience that whole thing, I'll tell my producer, I don't want to know what the topic is all mm -hmm. about. Much like me not knowing anything <laughs> about you. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't want to know what the topic is all about. I don't want to see your script until mm -hmm. we actually go out to shoot mm -hmm. and to talk to all the people we talk to. And mm -hmm. that way it keeps it real, okay. keeps it more spontaneous. How advanced are you guys compared to the Philippines techno? You'd be surprised. The mobile phone industry in the Philippines is so much more advanced than anywhere else in Asia, I was told. Okay. Um, we're using 164 kilobyte SIM cards on our phones. Mm -hmm. In Singapore, we're using 64. Ew, which is okay. like, you know, five years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, right now we have, uh, I heard about this Blackberry or something that you could actually have like uh, on-time mm -hmm. email. Do you guys have that already? We have that. I refuse to use it. <laughs> when you're not at work, you don't want to deal with work emails. Okay. But yeah, uh, you know, like, uh, what do you call that? Pass a load? Yeah, things. pass a load. We don't have that in Singapore. You don't, you can't send money through your, your mobile phone. So, in Are certain, you serious? Yes. Uh, is that because everybody has money in Singapore? <laughs> uh, no, it's just. No, not because pass a load was developed, I think, more for, for OFWs. Mm hmm. Okay. 
Uh, the prepaid telephone, mobile phone industry in Singapore is just picking up. Mm, okay. Now that everyone has mobile phones, mm -hmm. you know, they're just pushing this prepaid thing. While well, as here, yeah. pretty much everyone is, you know, using prepaid stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why. Okay, but you, you were talking about being a uh, himbo or, or whatever. Okay. <laughs> techno himbo. A techno himbo. Technophobic. Okay. That's what my, my okay. producer told But, me. you know, because you are the anchor, you are the host, people tend to ask you questions. I mean, like me, I constantly find myself being asked, so what's the latest? Uh, rumor, what's the latest news, etc. It's like, uh, leave me alone. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to be bothered. But but in, in your case, don't people come over and, hey, uh, Tim, uh, should I buy this uh, Pentium whatever or should I buy this uh, whatever brand uh, stuff? For a while, I was an authority on mobile phones. I know which model to use because I've tried them all. Mm -hmm. and, um, after a while, people just kind of leave you alone. Mm -hmm. I have friends. They finally figured the guy doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy. It, it, I still have people asking me, you know, I'm buying a mobile phone, which one should I get? That one I can easily answer because okay. I've tried a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, other things, you know, computer stuff, I'm mm -hmm. still navigating my way. It's, okay. it's very complicated. People mm -hmm. take years to study this thing. So, okay. How competitive is it to be in a regional uh, setting such as uh, Channel News Asia? We're supposed to be competing with ANC because you're seen regionally now. Mm -hmm. uh, CNN, BBC. Mm -hmm. We're getting Al Jazeera sometime in okay. the middle of the year. Thanks. Uh, we it, need that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks. It's going to be competitive. You're going to mm -hmm. have to, I guess, for Channel News Asia's part, we're staying the way we are. We just report the news as it is. Mm -hmm. We don't lean to the left or the right or the mm -hmm. center. Um, but, but is it competitive in the sense that, you know, you better watch your back because, uh, you know, there are like 200 people who want that job or uh, uh, it's becoming more demanding because, uh, you know, we never used to see all of these people from Europe and America going into all over the world. Now, now they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. They're being assigned there. Uh, so the demands of the job has become more intense, at least for the big networks. For Channel News Asia, are you it's, guys going to get there? Uh, I think we're already there. Uh, mm -hmm. During the tsunami thing, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago was it, December 26, I think uh, CNN and BBC got the story first because it broke on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you know how Sundays are, slow news day, nobody's at work. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing happened in our own backyard. And everybody's got all their phones off. <laughs> exactly. Nobody knows what was happening until we all saw it on CNN. Yeah. So... How, how did that come down in your part of the world? I was here. I was in Tagay Thai when it happened. Um, okay. And everyone, everyone was only recalled to work like that night or early Monday. So you had to take the plane out. I, luckily, I didn't have to, but when I got back, we were pretty much working 24 hours uh -huh. um, because there were so many things happening. Mm -hmm. But the biggest criticism for our station uh -huh. at that time was, hey, it happened in your own backyard mm -hmm. and you guys weren't there the first few hours. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you really can't see. It was, you know, the day after Christmas. No one's around. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, I, I don't see or maybe I'm mistaken because I don't really get to see it, you know, uh, all day, all night. But mm. I get the impression that your organization is essentially like Reuters or, or the other, you know, AP, Agence France Press, you know, where they essentially, you know, as the news pile up, they just start dishing it out. Mm -hmm. They don't really go out of their way to, you know, to send reporters, send crews, you know, all over the world. Hey. We're here, this is our territory, and this is what we're doing. We're serving news. I think for the moment we do because we still have a philosophy. We don't want to offend anyone in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Singapore being such a neutral place, yeah. you know, you don't want to offend China. You don't want to offend India. You don't want to offend the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So we'll just report the news the way it should be reported, just mm -hmm. the facts, or at mm -hmm. least the facts as we receive it. As it's uh, sent out or mm -hmm. as it comes out. We're yeah. not going to look deeper mm -hmm. and try to make sense of why and things like that because mm -hmm. they probably really don't want people to get mm -hmm. upset over okay. over things we say because we're still trying to penetrate all these markets. How has it affected you as a person? Uh, Prophet is no glory in his own town, and uh, when Tim Tim Timothy go, goes home, 
Uh, what's it like? It's frustrating. My dad always said, you guys never provide insight with what you're reporting. <laughs> it's just facts and you just say the same things that you know we already know but you guys don't have anything new to say okay. like, it's just the way it is no right? analysis no no critique no editorial not for the moment i think because we're still only five six years mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. still trying to get into a lot of markets in asia and okay it's hard you can't say so, so your dad's actually engaging you already i mean i'm sure there was a time he wasn't even speaking to you <laughs> <laughs> i think my dad knows that i have this passion for news politics and uh -huh. all this you know issues and things like that so okay. it's one of the things we have in common I I'm curious because uh, I've seen I mean Maria Ressa is here mm -hmm. uh, uh, Twink Makaraig is here you used, used to, to be my okay. colleague yes okay your colleague and what is it uh, is it an area that's okay for the boys but eventually the ladies just kind of pack it up and say hey you know I, I got a life I got a home, I'm going home, you know, you guys can have this. Yeah, in America, I was told female broadcast journalists outnumber male two to one. Okay. Uh, Asian males are pretty much not in it, I think, because we're still only five, six years. Mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. still trying to get into a lot of markets in Asia, and okay. it's hard. You can't say... So, so your dad's actually engaging you already. I mean, I'm sure there was a time he wasn't even speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dad knows that I have this passion for news, politics, and uh -huh. all these, you know, issues and things like that. So okay. it's one of the things we have in common. I I'm curious, because uh, I've seen, I mean, Maria Ressa is here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Twink Makaraig is here. You used, used to, to be my okay. colleague. Yes. Okay, your colleague. And what is it? Uh, is it an area that's okay for the boys, but eventually the ladies just kind of pack it up and say, "Hey, you know, I, I got a life." I got a home, I'm going home, you know, you guys can have this. Yeah, in America, I was told female